Hey, before we get started on this video, uh, I just want to make a quick disclaimer note. If you're watching this video and you're not an A&P, you need to go talk to your guy that's working on the airplane that's a qualified A&P. Um, if you are an A&P and you're checking this video out and trying to get some advice, uh, this is how I do stuff. Um, it's not uh, set in stone. This is the way you should do it. Um, but this is the way I've done it. Uh, make sure that you are comfortable doing this and you do it as per industry standard and by the the books of the airplane and uh, service manual, parts manual, all that. Make sure you're doing it correctly. The AC4313 and the regs and all the thing to cover your butt. But if you're not an ANP and you're watching this and you say, oh, well, Tim, uh, Mix Aircraft Solutions says this is what we can do. Bull. Don't be doing that. Um, we got a lot of responsibility on our shoulders um, signing these airplanes off. I'm just putting out this information of the stuff that I've done and that I've experienced. Uh, you can take that as a note and say, hey, you know, this is what this guy did. But, you know, let's see if it's the right way. And if it's not the right way and you see that I'm doing something wrong, please let me know. You know, this is my livelihood and I try to try to do do it the right way the first time. And I don't want to get in trouble with anybody. I don't want anybody else to get in trouble and I don't certainly don't want anybody to get hurt. So make sure you consult your A&P, your IA, whoever's signing off the airplane to make sure that you're doing it right. All right, let's get to the video. Hey, good afternoon. Tim Mix here with Andrea. <laughs> You're going to have to do it on your own. That way it comes up. <laughs> you get more likes if she's in the picture. Um, we're working on this one for, uh, that we had tailwheel stuff with about not being a cheap mechanic. Um, the reason I'm making this video is because People have called BS on uh, what I'm about to show you that you can do. Um, so there's been a rash of broken axles on the Cessna 140 because they're 75 years old. And we'll show you one here. I'll put that right there and flip it. This axle here was on this airplane and we die pinned around the base here where it transitions into the the flange where you bolt it on and it was cracked it was showing indications of cracked with die pen uh, the problem with your axle cracking is it'll break and when it breaks the wheel will come off when the wheel comes off your prop will hit the ground you'll do a spin you'll flip over you'll go in the ditch you'll break the airplane and nine times out of ten you're gonna total it um, as you can see those are quarter inch holes so you can get the axles from uh, Grove that are non certified and put those axles on with a 337 and a field approval or you can get a DER to, to install them or you can get a Cessna axle. You know what? Oh, I was going to say this one's titanium, but it's too heavy. Um, but this is a Cessna certified axle. So the problem is, is you got three eighths here and then five sixteenths bolts here. But you can bush up the, th the three eighths hole. Come on, focus by uh, putting a bushing in there to bush it down to a 5 16 but then you're still got quarter inch holes here in your gear leg i've heard the talk that people say you can't do that that you can't drill the gear leg because it's tempered well this is true if you're going to drill up here or up there or up there but down here as I had just drilled this one right here, and I got three more to do. So we're going to do one more for you, and we're going to prove that you can drill 
the gear leg to bring it up to a 5 16 now the thing about the 5 16 bolt you add a larger bolt it's going to be stronger it's all going to be in shear but you you quadruple the strength by putting those 5 16 bolts in there so i'm going to hand the camera to andrea and she'll film me as i do this i'm going to switch out my reams the key part of it is, is to have nice, sharp reams, preferably a step ream. Um, this one here, <coughs> if you can see, this shank, the, the pilot part is 250, then the step up is 281. And then I have another ream here that's 281 to 301 and then we finish ream it with a 5 16 or a 3125 so you want to go up in increments you don't want to use a drill bit you want to use a you want to use a ream the ream makes a really nice hole it doesn't gouge the inside or set you up for any kind of breakage because you have a stress riser so we're going to start with the 248 to 281 we're going to add a little bit of mouse milk to this or you can use a good lubricating um, lubricant you can use engine oil or whatever works the best now what I do is I I, I want to be square so I'm using this little angle block here to kind of square me up with the surface so that my my view is as, as close to square as I can and I use just use it for the gap so I'm correct on my trajectory whether it's forward and aft or up and down so I'm going to try to square it up I like using the V part to start off with because it gets a couple sides at the same time and with the pilot it's going to hopefully stay as true as it can to the hole that's existing already. And get bound up with chips, you got to pull the chips off of it. And that slides right in there. Then you switch it out. You do one at a time. Or you can do all four at a time, just as long as you don't get mixed up and lose your place. Depends if you're production geared or make sure it's clean and you got some good lubrication on there. That pilot fits right in there on this one, so we don't really <laughs> Need to square up. And then you finish it off with the five sixteenths. Now two of the holes are 5 16 and these two are quarter and I'm going to turn the tools over to Andrea so she can learn how to do it but that's all you have to do it's you might have to make a logbook entry that you reamed out the hole, the holes to a 5 16 to um, acquire installing the axle but that's a lot easier than having a broken axle and having to repair your airplane. So, cheers.
So one thing I forgot to add is that when you're done drilling and reaming the holes, uh, you want to chamfer the edge on both sides of the hole. So you have, it's all completely deburred and cleaned up. But what Andrea is doing here is she's do your twizzle. Since the jack is there, she's just taking the deburr bit, cleaning the back side. But that's what it should look like right there. And all four of them are done. The other thing I want to note, whoever put this together, this brake torque plate, if you can focus, there it is. Somebody put these on without having the bushings inside. And so they were 3 8 holes on uh, except one of them, which I don't remember. I think it was this one here was the only one that didn't have a bushing. So we had to fabricate and install. You can see the wear on this one here. But we had to fabricate and install the little bushings to fit in those holes uh, because they just left them as 3 8 so this torque plate came off of a a larger airplane that had the 3 8 holes or they didn't bother to notice that the bushings had fallen out um, so you have to have those in there with the torque plate other way otherwise the torque plate moves and uh, causes problems so anyway wanted to let you know that hey so this was a little bit longer video than i've made before but it had a lot of information in it so i hope you can use it and kind of get an understanding of what you have to do uh the biggest thing about reaming out the holes in the gear leg is that you take your time make sure you're squared up you got good sharp tools you got a drill that'll handle it uh it takes a little bit of time but if you do enough prep and you do it right, it'll be a good, solid installation. A um, couple other little side notes is that make sure you use good, clean hardware. Uh, you torque the bolt, the specs, um, whatever it may be for uh, if there's something in the Cessna uh, manual that will put it. But generally it's going to be whatever the torque is for a um, AN5. Um, and I think we've been using like 20 and 22 um, length uh, bolts with a AN365 nut, um, nylock nut type locking style. You can use the metal locking ones too, but uh, nylocks are sufficient for this installation. Um, make sure you torque them. Make sure you have the torque plate set up properly for your brake calipers so the brakes work properly. Uh, make sure you torque the wheel um, to proper tension on for the, the wheel bearings and that, that you don't get them too tight or they're too loose when you put all that back together. And you should have uh, years of um, useful... Um, <laughs> useful... Uh, time with the airplane so again consult your ANP your IA you know talk to them um, make sure you're comfortable with doing all this uh, bring it to me if you want me to uh, I'll do it it's not a big deal it doesn't bother me any I've done several of them and they all worked out and and we I, I made another little video about uh uh the the service letter 60 uh dated back in july 1st of 1949 uh that tells you that you can drill out the the gear leg to the upsize the bolts so anyway mash that uh like button subscribe um hit the notification if you want to hear more from me uh if you don't like what you hear don't watch me <laughs> but whatever you do have a great day all right see ya